Coming up, you're going to discover the fundamentals that you need to manage your app development project. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. And today joining me, my good friend for years now, Haim from B7Dev.com. If you're looking for an app development firm to really guide you through the entire process, go check them out. It is the letter B, the number 7Dev.com. Haim, welcome back. Hey, Steve, how are you? Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Haim, you've worked with big, small clients. And one of the things that you do really well, and you probably have it streamlined like perfectly, is project management. Let's go into some of the fundamentals to make sure that the audience's app gets developed on time and cost effectively and gets to the fastest MVP possible. So break it down for us. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to make this clear. I'm not trying to replace a PMP, that means a project manager professional, that is a university career, okay? So it's always advisable to get one on board, but you know, sometimes you don't have the, you don't have the budget, you manage things by yourself, or this is based on our experience. And also, by the way, on principles that uh, are uh, included on the uh, project management uh, science, okay, because it's a it's a very large science with a lot of angles and etc. Depending on the nature of the project you are managing, okay. So basically, how do we approach an app project from the man management perspective? We usually use these uh, seven. Uh, points, so pivots, or so key points to manage it uh, in, a, in, a, in a more efficient way. First of all, to the product definition, okay, in bigger companies, you will have someone that is called the uh, product definition manager, okay, in the same way that you have at the same level or sometimes higher level, sometimes uh, below him, the uh, product manager. But uh, you need to help other people on the team, I mean, developers, designers, QA, investors, whatever it is, to understand the idea with as much as possible for the details, okay? The more the detail, the less the discussions, okay? You cannot tell a uh, later, I didn't know, I didn't think about that, okay? Everything should be written on a piece of paper. That is a good, you know, it's like a contract, okay? But it's not legally binding just to let the others know what the idea, the full extent of the idea it is, okay? So after you have this basic blueprint, this, this product definition document, again, could be in a very formal format, but at least something written that you can share. Hey, Haim, I want to interrupt a little bit. Do we need mock-ups at this point or are we good with just sort of explaining what the app idea is. The more details that you can that you can add, mockups, references from other apps, illustrations, hand sketches, the more the merrier. Because everything that you think that you can bring aboard to help others will in fact help others. Okay? Because again, the more details, the less discussion. I know one of the things I hear from clients is man, I really needed to define every interaction within the app. And that's so important. Like developers are good with, I don't know what side of the brain it is, but they're good with just following what to do because they have so much going on that they're thinking about that they're not thinking about that. If you tap this, this has to happen. So make sure that every single interaction is defined whether it's a back button, whether it's a button, whether it's a part of a screen, if it's supposed to do something, make sure it's defined for the developer as well. Because he or she has so much going on, they're not gonna think about, oh, this means just be as detailed as humanly possible. So deeper than you want. Don't think anything is intuitive, is what I, I would say, my advice. Then when you have all this written, you need to understand how an app or a piece of software works. You have the what is called the front. The front usually is what you see at the screen or what you interact with at the phone, at the screen, etc., etc. No matter some other calls, the client. And then you have the server side or the back. When all the data is stored, all the business logic, what I mean business logic in a more plain language is the processing of the, of the data. Okay, if I put uh, add two more units, it will say, okay, I need to do A plus B. Okay, all this logic is not done at the front, it's done at the back. 
So the languages are different. There are server-side languages and front-side or client-side languages. So we need to try to separate the areas. Okay, this task will be done by the server-side developer. This side will be done by the front-side developer. Okay, so you can talk with each one at a different level because in the end of the day, they will uh, uh, talk each other and they will integrate each other. But we need to understand what person do is, is doing what. Another important thing, for some really small projects, the same guy is usually doing, I mean, what is called a full stack. Uh, and mobile, maybe someone on mobile also is doing server-side development. So sometimes the same guy will be doing for really small things, uh, small projects, will be doing uh, the same work for both. But usually we have two, three, a team of guys on each of the sides, okay, server side and front side. So after the third point is what you will be doing as a project manager ad hoc or a project manager per se. You will be like the orchestra director managing all the parts, the server side or back, the front uh, side or client, okay? The designs from the designer, the integrations when they need to be. You need to be in contact of every of the every person in the team, every of every factor in the equation. You need to coordinate them and most important, talk with each one. Do you have a delay? Do you have a problem? Everything is going as per the schedule, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You role as a project manager is to coordinate all the efforts and to check that everything is under control or at least going as desired. It's also your role to tell the developers you are delayed, we need to accelerate this. You, if you are working for a third uh, customer, like in my own case, I work for customers, I need to talk with them and to update them about the status. If they have some questions, if the developers have some questions, I need to ask the customer uh, the, for the answers. Okay, so first of all, make a what is called a quick start. Okay, um, first meeting when you say, okay, this is the idea I, I handed to every one of you, the guidelines, the, the, this document that we talked at the beginning. Okay, let's start talking about what part every one of you will be doing. If you prepare a timeline, okay, we need to start by this date, complete this stage by this date, because the front is waiting for the back to do it, or vice versa, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, in this meeting, you need to do a, every, I mean, a quick organization of the project when you start. After this, the number four is to do periodical meetings. We need to do meetings at certain short intervals just to check that everyone is working accordingly to the expectations. We have no delays, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can do it by Zoom. We can do it by Meet. We can do it by any other meetings in person. Okay. The most important thing is what is an efficient meeting? A lot of people hate when they need to go to meetings because it's too long. It's, it's, it's not clear. It's not... so. Basically, in a nutshell, a meeting should be short, should be useful, should be without a start and uh, uh, the conclusion points. Okay, so what we agreed on, we write on paper. You will do this, I will do that, like, you know, like in the comedy movies, like they are planning something. You will do this, I will do that. Okay, we, people, we need this done by this date. If you have any kind of problem, just let me know. We will try, maybe you need to do an intermediate meeting between the periodical meetings just to clarify doubts between the team members. Is there a period of time that you like to meet every week, every other week? This is depending on uh, how big the team is. If the team is really small, two or three guys, we can do it every week. If the team is bigger, we can do it every two weeks or three weeks. But again, maybe the server side will have meetings in between them the front side will be meetings between them and you will be always coordinating and checking that everything is as should be as planned okay because it's not a fixed period of time that you need to check what some teams uh, are doing are uh, depending on the methodology for development they are doing shorter sprints i mean they say okay this week we'll be working on this let's meet two days before the end of the week in order to see how we are going by weekly meetings, depending a lot and also on the availability, etc. etc. 
Usually what I recommend is don't abuse of the meetings. The meetings should be shorter, no more than half an hour, because everyone wants to keep working and then try to uh, bring everything prepared to the meeting. Okay, the more shorter and efficient that the meetings could be, the better. So number five, what we try to prevent in any project is what is called the scope creep. The scope creep is a magic word that means the difference between the timeline that you plan for and the reality on the development. Okay, why? Because, you know, unexpected problems, someone got ill, uh, the customer is asking for more features, some, some technical problem that we have to solve and then we have more, more time to, to do it, we spend more time to do it. So how we avoid the scope creep, in a, a, again, in a nutshell, is a very long theme to discuss, keeping everything a, a communicated, okay? So everyone should be a, a raising the hand, I have this problem, okay, how will affect that the next of the development? Maybe we tell, okay, move to the next area of the app while we try to research how we can fix it. Maybe we need to ask for external help, uh, maybe uh, we will wait, we will talk with the customer. This is really complicated. Can we change it for a uh, replace it for another thing, etc. etc. The idea is communication in the project management is key. The scope creep is uh, avoided through communication and through usually keeping a stick to the timeline and not adding any more features than could affect the timeline. Okay, but uh, basically is communication is key because in order to not to add more features than originally planned, we need to communicate with the customers or with the developers. Let's stick to the plan. Point number six is QA. QA is, uh, should be done at a very early stage of the development. First of all, we are going from the biggest bugs to the, to the finer bugs. Okay, we go to basic non, non-functioning bugs up to very small bugs in the end. That is when I log in, the mail that I get, the color is not what I expected, or maybe I need to correct the type. Okay, those are very easily fixed big uh, bugs. But if we start the QA earlier, we will be doing a, a more efficient development than doing the QA in the end. QA should be from at the earliest stages of this uh, project. And the last and not as important point is uh, how fast we can move. A very uh, common question that we get from customers is, okay, if I put, how many developers you need? Two developers, okay. And if we put four developers, it will go twice as faster? The answer is no. Adding more people, we just make it slower and not faster. Smaller teams very much trying and communicating each other is better than adding more people. How fast? Can we move? Depends a lot of the project. And again, there is natural time limit that we can hit. You need to plan for a logical, uh, you need to take in account a logical uh, lapse of time for development. It's not that more people always, uh, there is an old joke in development that says, one woman gives to birth in nine months, you cannot put nine women at birth in one month. Okay, it won't work like this. Sometimes less is more, and this is the case of development. That is it. The project management fundamentals for apps. Look, in our next video with Haim, we're going to really break down how do you avoid scope creep? Because it is one of the biggest mistakes that we see out there. And so we're going to really, really break down all the top points to make sure you launch your product on time. Stop adding more features. You don't need it. I have a lot of case studies that say we've been able to, you know, 10x revenues with the same basic features. And I think that's the biggest mistake I see when I'm working with clients. They're always adding more features when the first version was really good enough. It's just now you don't have enough downloads to warrant these new features. So we're going to break that down. Join us for video two when we're going to talk about how do you avoid scope creep. Once again, it is Heim from B7Dev. So if you want to go check them out, it is the letter B, the number seven, dev.com. Heim, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. Thank you. See you on the next video.